Greetings, everyone, in love, light, and wisdom to you all today. So this video actually came to me while I was walking outside and just enjoying my day today. And I have been thinking about the Area 51 raid. And if you do not know what I'm talking about, you can actually find a group on Facebook that discusses a, that it's basically close to 2 million people now that want to basically just go to Area 51 and see what's actually going on. And part of this is a joke, and then part of it is actually truth, because, of course, when you have a million people or more, you're going to get people that are actually going to take this very seriously. And so I have been thinking about this for, for a while now. And the moment that I wanted to actually get my thoughts out there about this, you know, coming from a very vocal starseed on YouTube, and I have the Palladian University Wisdom page, I'm very, very vocal about aliens and what I believe are downloads or messages that are contained within my soul and then I want to share with others. I'm very vocal about that. So I feel that I definitely have a lot of thoughts and a lot of visions, future kind of visions about what could happen from this point on. And as I was actually thinking about this, I started to get very strong energy around me that was more than my energy. It was a collective consciousness that was coming in. And the collective consciousness that was coming in was actually the Palladian Council of Light. Um, I call it the Palladian Council of Light because that is kind of the visual that I get when I tap into them. However, they are, uh, they are Palladian beings that are very humanoid-like, but they are very elven-like in the idea that they're very regal and they represent a more futuristic, mature version of humans because they are simply older and they are our brothers and sisters and they are also responsible with helping to seed part of the planet. So a lot of the Palladian star seeds on this planet actually contain their DNA. Now, on one level, we are all connected. And so all of the star races are actually connected to, to the humans on Earth. But I wanted to discuss something kind of complex. And if you are ready for this, then that's why you probably came upon my video here today. But I wanted to talk about some of the prophetic vision of Tolkien in his story about Lord of the Rings and how that relates to what's actually going on today. And I am getting a big urge from the Palladian Council of Light to, yes, discuss this, because this is what's going to help humanity kind of understand where they're going. Now, there are important roles for each part of the collective story. And just like the Fellowship of the Ring, J.R.R. Tolkien was talking about a coming together of different races and coming together in order to fight against a dark force that is, you know, threatening the entire Middle Earth or Arda. Tolkien's vision did not come from a vacuum of space of his imagination. He was actually tapping into old memories of him being part of having the Atlantis haunting, but also he's connected to the collective story that we're all part of. Each of us has a role. And I posted on my Instagram a, a video about the butterflies that I saw around a butterfly garden around my house, because that to me symbolizes what each soul on earth is. And although elitism and a type of superiority and hierarchy comes into play on this planet, it's not the truth because the person that is homeless that is sitting somewhere right now just watching you know people walk by them is just as equally sacred and important and a part of the whole consciousness that we come from as much as world leaders are and i really truly mean that and there's a type of division and separation that happens on earth where people don't look at those people as being as special as them. And it's not truth. The truth is that we are all drops in a great ocean and we are all connected. 
And a lot of people who are having their spiritual awakenings are realizing that about themselves. So what Tolkien was trying to describe was races coming together that each had their different thing. They each represented a part of Eru Iluvatar's mind. If you read the Silmarillion and you can understand that kind of really beautiful kind of metaphor about what's actually going on. Each of these parts of the collective represent different roles. And so you have humans right now on earth that actually represent the curious nature about aliens. And so they want to storm through Area 51. They want to go and see what's going on. And I'm sure that a lot of you in your life, you actually have people that play that role of the human. The human that is curious about other life outside in the universe and also doesn't really connect to aliens themselves. And so they may play that role of being, no, I'm just human. I'm, I'm simply human and I want to know what the government is doing and I want to know what aliens are doing and aliens have their own agendas and I want to know and they're very, very into that role of playing the part of the human. And then you have star seeds, which are the awakening parts of, of a human being into their galactic origin and feeling a connection to other parts of the universe and understanding that they are not strictly from Earth, that they have come from other parts of, of the universe and have belonged to different planets and have had lifetimes on different planets. If you can awaken to the idea of consciousness being infinite, then you can awaken to the idea that you have had many lifetimes before this one. And so the star seed represents a soul that is playing the role on earth that is awakening to these past memories and are are basically kind of representing a bridge between humanity and aliens and then you have the aliens in the story and the aliens are part of the collective to represent the future and to represent different pathways and different um ways that people can go into the future and where humanity can go as, go as a whole. So that is the collective story. And the interesting thing is that Tolkien wrote about all these races. You have the men, you have the dwarves, you have the elves, you have the hobbits all coming together to fight against a dark army or a dark force. What is the dark force on this planet? Not in the terms of evil, but in the terms of keeping information concealed and people unaware and everything in the dark. What is the dark force on this planet? It is the world leaders and their governments. And the masses are actually now at a point where they have awakened and they're wondering what's going on. There's a, a sense of transparency that we're entering into. So here are the thoughts coming from me to let you know what I feel about this Area 51 raid. And should humans do it? Should star seeds be partaking in it? You know, is this something that's good for us? Or is it something that we need to be cautious about and maybe go another way? I'm gonna be very, very honest at a risk that I might be put on a government list. Because let's be honest, the government wants to watch and surveillance anyone that is going to basically shine a light too much in their direction. And part of it is because the people within those governments are concerned about humanity and they come from a good place, but also part of it is because they come from a place of fear and they're not really spiritually awakened to the point of understanding our interconnection. And so there's this concealment, there's this darkness over earth. And so the Pleiadian Council of Light told me that, and I'll have a direct message for you because they want to actually speak through me to everyone right now so that everyone can kind of hear. But just you know my thoughts, and then I'll get to the message, is that my thoughts have been, as a starseed soul, as someone who identifies with their galactic origin as well as being human, 
I feel that this is actually a positive step in the direction of bringing more light to earth and really helping to kind of combat the darkness that tries to spread and tries to take over. I'm not saying that the government itself is an evil entity or the world leaders are evil entities themselves that we need to take over. Um, but I do feel that they do conceal a lot from the masses. And no one really gave them that authority or that role. They just took it upon themselves to do that. And they acted out a role, like everyone has a role, for a particular time. But now that time is over where their, their roles are no longer needed because they are not the keepers of information anymore or knowledge. But humans themselves are actually awakening to a greater understanding that they are far more powerful than they were led to believe and they have all the information and the knowledge within them and it's about seeking within and looking a little bit deeper at the going ons of the world and also really looking at the inside of themselves and seeing who they are as an infinite consciousness and part of this whole collective. So those are my thoughts as a starseed. I believe that whether this is a joke or not, whether this doesn't happen or not, or whether a lot of people show up, it is always a good thing because the truth is out there and it does need to be exposed. I believe in a nonviolent way. I believe in a peaceful way. I have a vision that if anybody does go there, then it would be wiser to not bring any weapons with them and to show a peaceful curiosity and that the curiosity of the masses have grown to a point where it can't be contained any longer and put behind a black cloud of you know, secrecy and, and secret societies. We're not in that stage any longer. This is the new dimension on earth. And so humans are awakening to this need to have more transparency because I'll be honest, my visions of a more peaceful world and society cannot happen until there is more transparency through the structure of power and government with the people that they take care of. We absolutely need that transparency or we cannot have the Palladian type of advanced civilization that people have visions of and dreams and wants. We cannot have that without actually getting to the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is a sense of secrecy and concealment from the masses and the public. So I know that that can get me in a lot of trouble by saying that, but I am not at all trying to um, say that anybody should be violent in a protest or rebellious in their nature, but simply just letting everyone know that this is what was always supposed to happen, that everything that is going on right now, we are on the right path towards evolving our humanity's civilization and, and, and our world as a whole, that whether this event happens or not, it's going to change a lot of things. It's going to get the wheel rolling in a way and the collective story is, is taking place. And it is the fellowship that is kind of coming together as one in order to fight against the darkness of ignorance on earth that tries to conceal information, tries to hide things from, from the masses in society the pyramid I like because you know the pharaohs sit on the top and then you have the people on the bottom and what's happening is it's it's really being rotated and the masses are awakening and they're showing that you know you can't really keep us under these dark uh, veils any longer that that our eyes are being opened and we're actually noticing things and we're seeing all that's going on in the world so it is time so I have a direct message from the Palladian Council of Light for you today because the Palladians are, their energy as a collective consciousness are actually very excited for this. They're, they're very excited for humans um, and they're excited for their star seeds. They're excited to take place in it of this kind of grand kind of like revealing and unveiling of what's going on. Even if nothing happens on September 20th, in area 51, it's the idea 
that has been pushed out there. And that is a seed that will grow and it will bloom and it will bring us into a new future together. So here is the direct message for you because they really want to talk and they're excited to um, speak to everyone because this is the time now. Greetings, brothers and sisters of light. We are so happy that you have taken it upon yourself to bring forwards the light onto earth. For so many years and so many centuries, your world has been concealed from you. You have not known the true spiritual truth of your power, and it is time. It is time for you to gain that, to gain that wisdom, to understand that each one of you are a precious soul. You are a precious soul in this universe, and you have been lied to. You have been lied to by those that have been under the influence of negative entities, but also the, under the influence of their own unconscious selves. We are so happy for you, and we cry, and we rejoice, and we are hugging you, and we are holding you spiritually from a distance, because we are so excited for this to take place. And we know that Human endeavors take a small step into the right direction, and they are subtle, but they are strong. And we want, to we want you to know that what is happening right now is the truth that is being revealed. And things may not go as planned on the day of Area 51. Some of you may have grand visions, especially you star seeds. You may think that this may be the end all be all and everything will come out into the open and you know it will start a whole new era for humanity. But these are small baby steps. We ask you to be patient, but we are rejoicing with you at this time. We love you and we are so excited for you to enter into this new era with us. You are our brothers and sisters in galactic unity and we are one with you. Be patient with you, be patient with yourself. Understand that this is exactly what's going on and what is truly meant to happen. Be careful with yourself, but also do not take no for an answer. Do not take the darkness to conceal the light from you. You deserve it. You deserve to know your power and your true source of joy and bliss is withholding that power within you and understanding that you are a grand design and creator in this universe yourself. And each world you create, you will experience. This is the time the collective is coming together, all the creators are opening their eyes and we realizing how beautiful and precious they truly are. And we are so excited for you to join us in this new movement. And we hold hands and like we said, we hug you and we welcome you and we cannot wait until the future reveals more to you. In love and light and high wisdom, we are here for you forever your Palladian brothers and sisters in the Council of Light. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and I hope that that um, touched you on some level. And I hope I am not in trouble with the government. I am a very peaceful person, but I um, am a soul that wants to see change. And I want to see change for the government as well. I want to see love come in and I want to see transparency and I want to see more people getting the life that they deserve and experiencing the joy and the bliss that they deserve. And no one keeping that experience from them. So thank you all for joining and we will see what happens September 20th. I am not going, but I will be here in spirit, wondering, observing, using my elf eyes to look and see what's going on. And I cannot wait. And the Pleiadians are with us. They are actually excited for this because in the collective story, we are one and they are kind of rooting for us because this is about a triumph over the darkness in the world and about bringing the truth to surface, even if it means that it's baby steps, they understand 
that this is a mon monumental time in history for a million people to come together and say, yeah, you know, this might be a joke, this might be funny, but I actually do like this group, I'm following it, and I'm going to the event. So we shall see if it happens, but that's what they have to say, whether it happens or not. This has started and planted a whole new seed in the world. Love to you all.